and welcome everyone to episode 112 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, of course, Brandon Bovia, letterer of manga like Kaiju Number 8 and uh, Dragon Ball Super. Uh, and as we're recording this, uh, it has been two days since the, the newest chapter of Dragon Ball Super dropped, which is, of course, the first one that's come out since the passing of Akira Toriyama. I think if even if you're not cut up on Super and you have any kind of interest in Dragon Ball or his work as a whole, I think it's like rather poignant. Uh, so I just wanted a, a quick PSA that like you should you should go read that uh, uh, chapter 103. I, I uh, definitely took a little bit of time to read that chapter, and it is surprisingly heartfelt by the end. Yeah, because exactly. it's, and it's yeah, all the, wordless. <laughs> yeah, the the ending got me in a way that I. It, it's hard to say if it was planned that way, uh, if that was the original draft, or if like uh, Toyotaro changed the ending based off the, you know, what had happened. But either way, it is it it hits. So <laughs> mm, it's 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 very effective and. Uh, Boy, you want to talk about some more uh, effective storytelling? Uh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think this this is the um, the paradigm shift. That's that that's what I think of, like, with these chapters that we've hit now. I, I, like, just, we're at chapter 501. It just, like, it feels like we're in a different era. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, it's theory, you know, by a lot of standards, like, oh, we're at the halfway point. It's like, it makes sense that there's a paradigm shift. We're literally, at, 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 you know, at 501. Yeah. But technically, we're not there. We're not there yet, as, as far as what yeah. the current chapters are at. So we're... We were at... We would have been at the halfway point, like, two years ago. <laughs> yes. So we need we need to go, a, like, a few more... I think we need to get to, what, uh, like, 550-something in order to be the, at the halfway point now. Yeah, yeah, because I think we're we're up to a thousand, a uh, thousand one hundred, I think exactly. Yeah, some somewhere around there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> let's get to it because, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about. So, chapter five hundred and one, the world begins to swell, and boy, does that <laughs> ominous. That, boy, that is that is very fitting. ominous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully Rob Lucci here. I hope he. I hope he stops swelling. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, maybe let's let's hope he got punched into be into being a better person because yeah, <laughs> he was uh, certainly full of himself and certainly uh, yeah, take it a little a bit of a monster pie. in his own right uh, own right. Yeah. But hey, they, they the doctors <laughs> got the soaking wet money, and it's time to get him feeling better. Yeah, so we'll see how this all ends up. But yeah, last time we ended with the reveal of uh, Silver's Rayleigh, the former first mate of Gold Roger. So, of course, we move over to Navy headquarters where Garp is just hanging out. Like, I love his reaction to this. Yeah, it's like, God, so really? You say, like, yeah, it seems like nobody's noticed that they're, tr they're trying to sell him as they would any old man. It's like, <laughs> they're selling him at a slave auction. It's like, uh, they're, they're, could it really be him? It's like... Uh, no, leave this to me. Don't tell anyone else. It's like, but if it's really him, it's like, oh, it's him. No doubt about it. This isn't the yeah. first time. And I love the explanation. He's like, he probably, you know, he probably sold himself to cover his gambling debts. Like that, <laughs> th this is our introduction to the King of the Pirates' uh, first mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sells himself into slavery so he can cover gambling debts. That's okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, all right. I guess... Take advantage of the system what way you can. It, it's the funny thing is it's it's kind of amusing in how Garp is treating all this, but it's also ominous how the pay that we get that last panel. Now mm -hmm. is an especially bad time. Do you want the Navy to take on two legends at the same time? Right. Yeah, because he, he's telling this guy like, uh, we you need to be careful, you know, and that's why he's like, you try to keep this on the down low. Like, we don't want to make this a big thing because we are apparently strapped for resources. And and I think that that goes back to I think they alluded to this uh, last week where they were like, like, you know, we're right next to Navy headquarters. But for some reason, there's not a lot of Navy. I, people I think there's also been like maybe some mentions of like preparing for war or something like there's right, been a yeah. lot we, of we allusions other, uh, to something big happening. Yeah, we're going to find out what that means in a little bit, but... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, either way, it's time for us to go back to the Human Auction Hall in Grove 1, where uh, Mr. Disco is awake again, 
and ready to do his thing for the uh, the auction. And we get we get like not a we get a big a bigger spread to sort of show off the display and just how many people are here ready to buy slaves. It's like oh good mm-hmm. god. And I also like I kick my I kicked myself later. It's like how did I not recognize this? Because I saw the symbols below like oh, yeah. human auction, and I'm like. I recognize those. What what are that? What is that from? Where did I see those before? And it was killing me. And of course, we'll find out later. I missed it entirely. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until you mentioned it, I was like, "Oh yeah, huh, yeah." <laughs> yeah, I right over my head. Had no idea. So uh, yeah, we get our we get our view of the slaves. We see Cammy in very low spirits at this point. Which who can blame her? And uh, they start rolling them out. We even see a little bit of relay get a musician is he able to play anything he's an expert winemaker 25 year old human male in his prime he's six feet inches 206 pounds we'll start at 480,000 berries not cheap these slaves no no and we even get a, a list that duval handed to sanji about human about minimum starting bids where humans for 500,000 dwarves and minks Actually, dwarves, minks, long, long arms, long legs, and snake necks, all 700,000, uh, 700, which, oh, God, you know, one of the, the, the big new pirates, I guess, is one of the long arms. That's, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Apu, Scratch Apu. Apu. That's right, Apu. Yeah. I thought it was very funny uh, also. Well, we don't know what minks are at this point, and we're not going to find out for a very long time. <laughs> just going <laughs> to point that out there. <laughs> we'll we'll get there when we get there. Have we ever met a dwarf or a long leg or a snake neck either? I don't think so. I'm not even, like, I think I know what they're referring to with the dwarves too. Hmm. Which is also a thing. For, like, I don't know if they call, if they, like qualify as dwarves if i'm thinking of the thing i'm thinking of okay um and then and then the minks are even further after that <laughs> yeah so that those are those are both things from way way later which i found i was like ah that, oh, that's that's neat that they put those there yeah it's it's also f- interesting that like how much of a jump so a fish man is one million but a giant um, well specifically a male giant is 50 million while the female giants are only worth 10 million so yeah wow that's interesting that really goes to show how rare the giants are yeah, just and, and to jump probably, up in cost, but yeah, it's it's also one of those things like we haven't seen a female giant yet. It makes me curious, like why are they worth so much less? Is this, I guess just going for the strength aspect, I suppose. Yeah, or the, yeah, I I genuinely don't know <laughs> because obviously there's a difference in how the mermaids are treated, where the females are worth seventy million and the males are only worth one million. Yeah. Oh, those male mermaids. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we got the bifurcated uh, for, for uh, female mer- uh, mermaids at ten million. Also, devil fruit users are special, which who knows what that means. I, I guess it could just depend. It depends on the power, is, is how I inter- and cho- choose to interpret that. I guess so. I, I I only focus on this because it's sort of an idea of how like how these things are like valued. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that there's a level of rarity to just like, and also just like the the vast amount of races in the one piece world again you know there's stuff on here that like we've just not seen before Mm -hmm. um but but i think the fact that there are so many like human and kind of demi-human races that are like sought after i I think i think it's a subtle way that says a lot about this world It, it, it also gives context for pirate bounties Yes, because a normal fishman slave is a, it goes for a million, and Arlong was worth thirty million because of his activities as a pirate. And then you mm-hmm. get into our superstars, our new superstars net here that are all worth over a hundred billion, more worth more than a, a mermaid. Then you got Luffy and uh, Kid, both over three hundred million. It's like oh. Oh wow, they are <laughs> they are notorious. Holy crap! Yeah, it's it's also important to note too. I you might have read this out. I forgot if I just zoned out, but like the it says, you know, saleable humans include criminals and citizens of nations outside of the world government, which I think that also says a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted to mention that I completely forgot, but yeah, that's hmm <laughs> hmm that's yeah quite interesting. I don't know this. This world government thing is not on the level. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, Dragon's whole thing is starting to make a little bit more sense. Yes. Yes. True. True. Yeah. I, th- I think the the existence of a revolutionary army 
only makes sense in like the context of knowing like what they're revolting against. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like, oh, it's it's pirates are there for the freedom and uh, the, the revolutionaries are likely here to get rid of this extremely corrupt system. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that there's probably not a lot of freedom in this world. If I if I just had to guess. <laughs> not extremely, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So, yeah, if Sanji freaks out at the sight of this. It's like, OK, we got to find her. Let's let's go. And yep. uh, they've they've checked out all the, uh, the all the, they're basically all spread out, going all around, just trying to find see who it, who they could find, and they start getting just clues here and there, and finally discover that they're in Grove One, which one I didn't even think about this until I saw Zoro's panel, where he's like, mm-hmm. I need to get back to the ship. Where's the tree marked one? I'm like, Oda, you brilliant bastard, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to have it work out he- like that. And that that's the great thing about Zoro, man. He gets lost, but he also gets to where he needs to go somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's it's incredible. <laughs> but yeah, they know to go to Grove 1, and uh, they've, they've already hit entry number 6. A set of 10 male human workers with interesting palms on their heads. Okay. And Sanji's just freaking out. I was like, we're going to be going on time. He's like, we're well, not going to do it. How are we going to do this? You're so slow. He's like, hey, did I change chorus after the, where I heard where the mermaid was? I've been heading to Grove 1 this entire time. It's like, don't worry. The boss always gets there first. And Sanji's like, wow, that actually is impressive. And the chopper's buddy shows up. I was like, they got here first. <laughs> yeah. Which, hey, I mean, second to arrive is still pretty impressive. I mean, the fact that he knew was pretty impressive. But I, I, Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was building up to a good gag. I'll, yeah. I'll allow it. You gotta love the undercutting of Duval a bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. He, he, we can't let him brag without... <laughs> Frankie makes it to the human auction as well. And he sees the argument happening. We even see the, the I guess, giant uh, that, that was being used by the Celestial Dragons last time. Just hanging out outside. Yeah. And they're basically the, the, all the rest of the straw hats of Sanji and I, 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 Nami are there. Basically, like you have no right to sell her. They're like, "Hey, we'll use legal means. We can means we can sue you for obstructing business. This is slavery." It's like, no, you have no right to treat uh, say anything about morals. Basically, we find out. Oh, they bribed the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The government turns a blind eye to this whole operation. And Frankie's just like, all right, well, I'm just going to blast my way in. It's like, no, no, Celestial Dragons are inside. Yep. You know, she's already wearing a collar. We can't let it explode. We have to be careful how we rescue her. Mm -hmm. And then this is, I I love, Nami steps up and is just like, you know, if you can't fight, we'll have to get her back by the shop's rules. Which, like, oh, the fact that she herself, you know, is basically willing to throw down the cash. And we've we've seen her treat like kind of like this with friends before when it comes to money. How she gave a bunch to Lola mm-hmm. when she saw like realized how she was helped her before. So to see it extended into Cami as well, it's it's nice to see that side of Nami where she is extremely greedy, but it's not the most important thing. Yes, uh, which is a great aspect for her character. We just see more of the slaves. I've got the the. Some of the slaves are just freaking out and just like, oh, I can't, I don't want to. Please don't sell me. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. It's like, call the Navy. I'll go to jail. Just don't sell me. And we find out that the amount of money they got from Thriller Bark was 200 million in treasure. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. which (laughs) Almost as much as they got from from uh skypea and hachi says that there should be plenty but like you know he's like i can't pay that can't pay back that much as if you know you know he's obviously owes them a great debt <laughs> yeah he's like i don't care what it costs to get our friends back you don't owe me anything so anybody have a problem is like no it's on it's not a matter of money it's like <laughs> hachi and Papa Goo are just uh, completely like grateful about what what they're willing to do for them yeah which is great character moment for nami yeah I, it's a plus it, it, it's fantastic so they step in as the auction's going on and of course uh kid notices them right away because he just seems to be extremely observant he's like huh shane the captain isn't here isn't here i want to see how crazy he is yeah and we see just the rest of the straw hats making their way toward grove one but that's not how we end things instead we find out why It'll mean war. I jumped the gun here from yeah. what we got at the end. So basically what they're going to be doing uh, is revealed in the papers. 
The commander of Whitebeard's second division, Firefist Ace, is to be publicly executed. And they're yeah, and they've been, they're like the regular people are freaking out. I was like, oh god, if they do that, Whitebeard will take action. And that's yes. when <laughs> DS is like, oh god, it's gonna be it'll be war. And he knows because he's you know former Navy man. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like, man, things. I, god. And, and that, that's what's so crazy about this is like everything we're just hearing bits and pieces of Ace's situation and it's just kind of just like going from bad to worse. Uh, but now even, you know, if even somebody like Garp is like, oh, yeah, like he he seems comfortably aware, like, yeah, we're going to we're going to execute Ace and, and Whitebeard is not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he is not. And also explains why there were so few Navy people around Sabaudia right now. So, hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So there, there you go. Uh, apparently, war is coming. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Do you have an SBS where we had to get an explanation on what bifurcated means? It, it basically just it refers to mermaids over a certain age. So, uh, yeah. basically, at thirty, that's when their tail splits. So, young mm. mermaids are worth more. Yes. Interesting. Fun, fun detail that we <laughs> learned from uh, Kokoro way back when. I know that comes back in a horrific way <laughs> yes indeed well let's get to chapter 502 the incident of the celestial dragons oh no <laughs> this this one's gonna be a doozy folks <laughs> oh yes but uh while while uh rob lucci's being treated we see uh the, the, the they had some extra money so they can go shopping and have a short break and kumidori's taking care of uh the, the bird and <laughs> Khalifa's got proper clothes. <laughs> I think I think she's got that Papaku's brand, a criminal. I think that's what. I think you're right. Star. I think she does have yeah. that brand. <laughs> yeah, we apparently this dancer is really something else, and we saw a little bit of this uh, dancing like girl in the slave pictures, uh, the slave panels previously. Even even a little bit in the background here with uh, I, I forget it, Char Charlin or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, uh, Char Charlos. I Charlos. Think. That's yeah, Charlos. It. Yeah. But started eight hundred thousand and sold for seven point two million, which yeah, that, yeah, wow, that is a lot. <laughs> Basically, he uh, Charlos arrives kicking his slave that he's been using as a horse. Is like, all right, this one annoys me. Sell it. I don't need it. I want a mermaid. I wonder if they're selling it. And he's picking his nose like just just, just the most disgusting person yeah. you could just imagine. Like you hate this guy. <laughs> you really do. I mean, and that's again. I feel by design. Every everything we've seen of the celestial dragons is just like they are the most just like depraved, disgusting human beings. Yeah. Ugh. But next up, we have Lacuba, pirate captain that was a clever trickster. A uh, bounty of seventeen million, so he's well built, and they're just like, hey, use him for whatever. And then all of a sudden, he starts to bleed from the mouth. They're like, what happened? And the, the crowd start freaking out a little bit because he's collapsing. And Sanji's like, he bit his tongue. <laughs> he, he, yeah. He bit. I Rather than be someone's pet, uh, he, he chose to die. He, he bit. I think he bit his tongue off. Yeah. Trying to yeah, kill himself. Which, dark. I can't. This is so bleak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tone, I feel like, has just shifted completely. Like, These are your oh. stakes. <laughs> this, this is yeah. how bad it is to be a slave in this world not that it's ever this good is in how, any world but yeah this is this is how the world works I, f I feel like we've gotten such a like not that there again not that there haven't been dark elements in one piece before but this really feels like we're, we're getting kind of a peek into the everyday life you know kind of kind of the underbelly of the one piece world and it like oda doesn't pull his punches here like oh no it's it's goofy it it, it it's like it can be goofy, but it is not depicted in like, a, oh, yeah, yeah like, like, it's not like that kind of like lighthearted. Like he's, he's not, I, I, th I think it's really important that he, he shows this and is not like really holding back in any way. I, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm 95% sure that this is like maybe the first on screen death that we've had in the lot and in, in present day One Piece since Buggy blowing up that member of his crew. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I definitely don't know if I remember enough to say one way or the other, but just definitely one of like, again, and I feel like a lot of deaths can be kind of like abstracted or cartoony, but there's something different about just like watching a man like bite his tongue so that he doesn't become a slave. Like that is, that's real. That's real stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you could, that's definitely taken from history. 
Mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's definitely something that's happened before. And, yeah. and you know, and the, then the way that non-concern is like, we can't sell him like this. He's cutting into our profits. How, how dare he do that? Right. Yeah. And the way that, you know, they just sort of like try to try to gloss over. It's like, oh, he got a nosebleed. He got so nervous. You know, he passed out. So we'll auction him again at a later date. It's just it's it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, we need a distraction. So, hey, mermaid <laughs> from from Fishman Island. That's when it's like freaking out. It's like, all right, it's Cammy. It's Cammy. We're going to take her back. We have 200 million. We see that we saw before that uh, mermaids typically go for uh, what, what was it? 50 million? Something like that. Yeah, I think I think uh, <laughs> I've already forgotten. But yeah, and Cammy's like, OK, cool. I see them. They came to rescue me. We're, we're good. And of course, Charlos is freaking out uh, at the side of it. And we don't even get a bidding war. No, just immediate cut at the knees. 500 million berries from Charlos. Yeah. And then just, yeah, the whole, the whole place goes silent. And then of course the first thing you see is Charlos's dad is just like, you know, like, you're wasting money again. Your aquarium has piranhas in it. It's just like, like, this is just like the, the concerns of the rich. Yeah. It's like, they can play tag. The mermaid, aren't the mermaids, the world's fastest swimmers. And it's just like, good God. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it just, it really is the situation all just going from bad to worse of like, all right, well, we can't bust our way through, so we'll try money, and then money doesn't work, and we're just like, all right, we're screwed. Yeah, and they're just like, there's nothing we can do. What what can we do about this? It's like, we have to get the key somehow, or like, what do we, what, it's hopeless. <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah. Not, what do you do in that situation? And it's it's like, well, she's being sold, and kid is just like well that's how the world works what a farce let's go and he's ready to take off and that's when luffy crashes through the roof Which with zoro course, <laughs> yeah yeah was like, hey we picked up zoro on the way in <laughs> <laughs> well and i love it. he's like i was heading back to the sun he's like no you weren't <laughs> <laughs> and luffy not knowing anything of what just happened it's like, oh, hey, Cammy, there you are. We're, I'm here to rescue you. It's like, you know, I'm glad I found you. And Hachi's desperately trying to stop him. It's like, no, no, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. do don't, this. Don't, 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 don't. And, and uh, as he's desperately trying to keep him back, his other arms come out. It's like, we can't yeah, set her free. The celestial dragons, don't do that. And then, of course, the other people see his extra arms. It's like, oh, disgusting, a fish man. How awful. It's one thing to, like kind of be told about the discrimination like and kind of like the heavy history that fishmen have with this with this place but like seeing all of these just like all all these you know rich people just being like oh (laughs) why is he that color why does he have so many arms and he's very pointedly drawing them to be hideous yeah 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 exactly like you know you've you've uh, come into a crowd of the most racist people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just reminds me, I've never read the comic before, but I've seen the panel where I think, I think it's something, something called Preacher or something like that, where this one guy's telling off all these racists. It's like, why do the me- people always talk about genetic superiority always look the worst? Where it turns to one guy's like, you, where's your chin? It's just, there's no chin. Like, it's just what? a straight <laughs> face, like, flat. <laughs> it's just... Very reminiscent of that. <laughs> yeah. And Papagoo is just like, Hachi, you need to get out of here. You're in danger. It's like, no, Cammy. It's like, no, get out of here. And you, Luffy's still trying to struggle to get to Cammy when all mm-hmm. of a sudden two shots ring out. And he looks behind. Cammy's freaked out. Papagoo's freaked, freaked out. Splattered with blood. Yeah, I was going to say that, that that shot of Papagoo just like freaking out, like splattered with blood. And then and then you see that it's it's, it's Hachi poor Hachi who got shot and is just on the ground while all meanwhile um Charlos is just you know basically like prancing he's like I got him I killed the fish man yeah just so proud of himself nobody's concern is just like uh what if he gotten close and given us a disease I bet he I be better he's plotting something I mean he has a fish brain and Cammy's of course crying out and just horror and you know Charles is just celebrating and just like I got I want to make note man. I want to make note of Luffy's expressions for basically the rest of the chapter because it is it is sort of like it is maybe the most pissed I've ever seen him. Oh, it is. He is ready to leash out, unleash on everything because you see him before as he's running towards it. He has just this, this sort of happy, determined look that he typically yeah. has. 
But as soon as that happens to Hachi and he is just done and yeah. Hachi is begging him. I you, made you promise before we got here. Do not cross the celestial dragons. Even if someone got shot, this is, I was a pirate. I, this is what I get for the bad things I did. I didn't mean for this to happen, but I just wanted to make it to not up to Nami, even in just a little, and I've always messed up everything. And it's just my like heart, man. Oh my God. The way that, yeah, the way that he's, you know, he's, he's atoning he's trying to his best to atone he acknowledges all of you know like the horrible things that he was complicit in uh, and and now like god th this hits so different now knowing um kind of like even just a little bit of the history that like the fishmen have in this world and again we, we talked about this last week i think where it's like it doesn't justify like what arlong did but you kind of you have a little more indication of the steps like to get there what pushed him to that point yeah exactly and and here we have like yeah again just hachi just crying out bleeding out just like i'm sorry i caused you so much trouble like i mean you look at these slave auctions no wonder arlong thought money was king of everything yeah exactly like like yeah if you're a fish man raised in this world like what other answer do you come to you know like i can i can Again, that doesn't justify what Arlong did, but it, it definitely, it puts it in a completely different light. Yeah. And everybody knows what he's going to do. <laughs> like, Luffy is, like, done. It's like, Papa goes, like, you'll never get away with it. Other people are like, uh, what's he doing? Yeah, well, well the thing is, <laughs> Kid's like, Charles, oh, God, he, is he serious? He points the gun at Luffy now. Yeah. Is the thing. And shoots at Luffy, which we know does nothing. But yep. then we get... Just the most satisfying punch. Just a good full page spread. Apparently, that's the end of volume fifty two. So, like as a as a volume ender, like just the as, build as up a to chapter this. ender as a volume ender, just perfect way to just like yes, where it's one of those things where it's like ah crap, but hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. Again, we we know <laughs> we've all of this build up to who the celestial dragons are, and and we've seen what they do to people who've just even crossed them slightly and, mm -hmm. and just inconvenienced them in any sort of minor way. And you know, here comes Luffy just punching one straight up in the face. And yeah, it, you can see them upsetting a celestial dragon just because of being ignorant or unaware of how things go or anything like that. But instead, it's Luffy pushed to the very brink of what he's yes. what he allows to happen, and uh, you it's cheer great. for him. You cheer. You you celebrate. It still might be one of the best singular punches in the entire manga. It it really is that good. Yeah, there's a lot of good punches out there, but that one. Yeah, that one is just like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just hell yeah. Whew, let's get continue on with chapter 503, Aggravated Island, where it's been a while, but we finally get a uh, color uh, opener where everybody's celebrating with Luffy punching <laughs> Charlos. Yeah, they got, they got, you know, they're hanging out with mushrooms. It's all great. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a cute one. But yeah, Charlos hits so hard and he flies back through the benches into the wall. I love, it's straight up, like, two and a half pages of complete silence. All you see, you, you see the aftermath, you see L Luffy cracking his knuckles, you're seeing, you know, all of, you know, like, the, the slavers, you, you see you see Law just like, uh. Yeah, well, I like that even as far as the, the, the that wide shot panel where they, they saw how far Charlus got blasted back, you can see yeah. Law and his crew there, and he, he's still just hanging out like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Well, and I love too that his kid is just kind of like, oh man, Luffy's not here. I wanted to, you know, <laughs> he was lamenting that he didn't get to see how crazy the captain was. And now here he is. He, he got to see something interesting. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, this is exactly what I wanted to see. And yep. God, I love how beat up Charlos is. It's, it's so satisfying. You know, Luffy just cracks his knuckles and it just says, well, I punched, uh, I punched him. Navy, Am uh, Navy Admiral's coming. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love all, on this one, they're all the straw hats. Like, like they're all very calm about this. They're just like, and you know, Zoro's just like, well, you beat him up first. So I didn't get a chance to slash him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And Nami's just immediately to Hachi is like, uh, Hey, get a hold of yourself. It's like, and like, you guys are in trouble. It's like, eh, it's Luffy. What are you going to do? 
Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's go get her keys, get that collar off. Let's go. And uh, you noticed something about this line where the the, the, the sister. Oh, yes. <laughs> Brother Charlos, even father has never laid a hand on him. That's a Gundam reference. It's a very blatantly a Gundam reference. Just, <laughs> it, it's one. It's one of those. Li- it's one of those lines that it, it's a. It's a. In Japan, it's a very famous meme line. It's 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 from the original Gundam. Yeah, where you know Amuro gets slapped by his captain, and it's just like even even fathers never hit me before. It's just whenever you see that in anime manga, it's a Gundam reference. It just <laughs> it, just, it just is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and of gosh. course, here's where all hell starts to break loose, which. We, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, you got this. This the father uh, seeing this is like, how dare you do this to my son? And he starts start shooting, shooting at Luffy. At Luffy. Yeah. And uh, you'll 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 see what happens when you mess with us. And Shanji just kicks the gun out of his hand and beats the hell out of his guards. And it's like, uh, we need security in here. That's when the straw hats just start dismantling everybody in this building. This is so freaking satisfying. Even if you know, like. The consequences are are not going to be pretty. <laughs> no, but 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 in the moment, it is so cathartic, and you're just like, all right, you know, we we came in, we we crashed the party, now it's just time to let loose. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, like we have a real threat. There's an admiral on the way. Like he is calling yeah. for it. Make them regret this, and uh, everybody else starts just running for it. Zoro sets Kami uh, free. At least. Uh, undoes the jug which you know is blocking all the sound from her so she couldn't hear anything yep. for this mm-hmm. and uh that's when the flying fish riders show up and drop off the rest of the uh the rest of the crew <laughs> and they're just not fully sure what's going on and i love that usopp <laughs> is the one that lands on the old man and flattens him i love that panel of just like his his glasses breaking <laughs> 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 the new stop's just like oh sorry dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> this god it's so great it's so great <laughs> it's just like they're insane <laughs> yeah we've got the whole crew here oh, they immediately all just start taking part in the fight like eh, we know what this is all about let's do this yep 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 so like okay we can go as soon as we get the bomb off her neck the battleships and the admiral are coming so hey we already we survived a uh, buster call we can we can do this <laughs> yep and that's when law says hey the navy's already here and then that's we get our first meeting between luffy and one of the other captains yep. uh where law explains like oh yeah the navy was here way before the auction started and we're surrounding the hall the entire time headquarters has a station post here in the archipelago don't know who they wanted to catch, but they probably never imagined that a celestial the celestial dragons would get beaten. I'm assuming that it's Rayleigh that they were after. Yes, I'm I'm pretty sure yeah. that's the case. The law just seems amused by all this. Like, yeah, thanks for the laughs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh Shaoria is just like tired of this and I think she I think she shoots disco. Uh yes. Yeah. yeah I, it I didn't looks notice like that before, she, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't mi- notice yeah, it either. Yeah, because Disco's just like, hey, that, that hasn't been paid for. You can't take that. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm silence. I'm killing this mermaid that they're after. And uh, she's getting ready to shoot her. And that's when three of them are all set to take care of her. Usopp, uh, uh, Robin, and Zoro. When all of a sudden, she just passes out. And now you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when really steps out. I was like, hey, Giant, there's a commotion. It's like the auction is over and I stole all the money I wanted to. So time to head back to the casino. <laughs> yeah. Freaking really. And then just, he's taking a swig and he's just like, I had intended on stealing from the one who'd buy me. <laughs> but think about it. Who would ever buy a slave who's my age? He's just laughing. <laughs> what a boss. I know. I, I love right? this man. He's, he's so good. <laughs> just... Oda making sure he makes every old person just freaking amazing. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and they're just like, how did the, how did they escape the cage? How did they get rid of the shackles? Where's their neck? Uh, the, the neck thing on there, you know, the 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 collar. Yeah, right, right, right. And just like, uh, what do we do? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Capturing him isn't really our job. We can, and how do we could <laughs> suppress a giant who isn't cuffed? And like, yeah. and that's when ha- Hachi uh, recognizes Ray. Like, oh, hey, Hachi, long time no see. Oh, wait. Oh, I understand. And he just starts, he just sort of looks around. He sees Cammy. He sees Charlos. He looks around. It's like, yep. ah, you've gone through a lot. So you help, but you're the ones who helped him. Now, and he just does that stare. This uh, hockey, I believe it's called, right? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody in the building just, just passes out except for Luffy's crew and, the other pirates and it's like 
my question is, were all the crew, including Usopp, strong enough to stand up to whatever this is? Or is, does Rayleigh have that much more control than Shanks did that he can target that wide of a range? And I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, the, the, there's a line in the next chapter that I think will sort of confirm that. But I definitely, yeah, because when we saw Shanks do, do when he saw, saw him use hockey, it was like he was so nervous talking to Whitebeard that it was just like... He, he's like he couldn't turn it off basically mm-hmm. but then god there, there's something just amazing about seeing like Rayleigh roll up in here he's just like all right i see what's going on here and then he just just makes he just zaps everybody <laughs> <laughs> and you can sort of see like the way that like luffy reacts it kind of looks like he's shaking a little bit so it, it might have it might not have been enough to like knock him out but you know he felt he's like he to, i interpret that those panels as like okay he felt that yeah and Rayleigh has been wanting to meet Luffy, which is very interesting in that way. Yeah. Even re- oh, boy. even recognize and it makes sense I guess it would make sense they'd recognize the straw hat considering Shanks was on the crew. Yeah. So oh man, mm. there's there's so much there that I can't wait to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> so chapter five hundred and four, Pirate Frontline on the Move. And we see the rest of them waiting for uh, Khalifa and Kumadori to finish shopping. And boy, they're in high spirits considering what they went through <laughs> against right, the Straw yeah. Hats. They're all just reading the paper, hanging out. It's kind of funny watching these just like super, super powerful government agents. Just They're just vibing. Eh, we're wanted by the government, but hey, I guess we don't have to assassinate anymore. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> they get to chill. <laughs> and we begin the chapter just like, oh, crap. Navy's here. Things are bad. Yeah. Luffy just beat up a celestial dragon. We need to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, all, all, all of the, um, all the supernovas are just like, all right, time to get out of Dodge. You know, uh, a beach is like, we're going to. Is like, hey, is our coding done? We're going to Fishman Island. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're getting out of here before an admiral shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, oh gosh, uh, was it Bonnie? Yeah, Bonnie. Yeah. Bonnie. He's like, oh god. The swordsman was a huge idiot, but the captain's even bigger idiot. Uh, I'm going to kick their yeah. butts if I ever see them in the new world. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's, I don't know, It's I, I like how these captains are sort of regarding each other. Yeah, yeah, because they're all, they're all rivals, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know, it, I mean, and it's all very simple reactions, but it's very, it's very fun kind of seeing, like, yeah, these are what all the other pirate crews are kind of like. And they they all went through painstaking effort to not piss off the Celestial Dragon. And <laughs> so then it's just kind of like, oh my god. <laughs> but, he, and again, but then we had a pool. It's like, huh, I want to see what they see what that admiral's like. It's like, no, we need to go. <laughs> no, didn't, no. <laughs> and uh, Hawkins is like, we need to like the Hawkins crew is like, hey, we need to go. It's like, no, no, I didn't get a reading that today is my my death, so we're fine. Yeah, he's all, always the most calm one. <laughs> but then we get. Freaking Son Goku is like, it's that kid. <laughs> Why is this yeah, kid? Well, what is going on with that family's bloodline? Is I just Son Goku is the most like like stressed out office worker. <laughs> <laughs> that is the vibe I get. He's just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Between Luffy and the uh, warlords, he is just done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's being told about, of course, the uh, supernovas all being there. And uh, they're like, yeah, it's it's definitely Luffy. He's probably the one who directly attacked it. Contact with the guards at the human auction. I mean, <clears throat> employment assistance office has been severed. So there you go. There, there's your hint that they're they're bought and sold. <laughs> oh yeah, they they know full well what's going on there. Mm-hmm. So they're like, uh, yeah, three celestial dragons were taken hostage. Did they make any demands? Not yet. Well, if they talk to them, we have attacked the nobles. Then we have no choice but to go. And that's when somebody's like, hey, Son Goku is like, Kizaru. Yeah, yeah. Kizaru. I'll, I'll, Kizaru, yeah, yeah. I'll be back. Of that, you can be, uh, be sure. And we see, just we don't see his face. A hint. Or we, we don't see his. Yeah, we see his, just mouth. his mouth and nose. <laughs> just it's a uh, an interesting look to be sure. So yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and this is when my like memory of the smile finally came out because yeah, Disco gets on the uh, gets on the uh, snail and calls his benefactor. Do Flamingo. Yep. Do <laughs> Flamingo. Like, this is, is your part. shop. <laughs> yeah. This is Do Flamingo's whole whole operation. 
Dingo is just like the reputation of the store is at rock bottom, and knowing the Roswells, they'll find something find something to blame us for too. So you have to do something about this. It's like, <laughs> no, I don't. I love, yeah, I love. G- G- Doflamingo is always the most just like carefree, doesn't give a crap about anything. <laughs> He's just like slave trading is getting old, idiot. And then <laughs> this line again we're not gonna know what this means for a long time but he says this is the era of the smile don't call me ever again <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> disco you could have the shop <laughs> i mean yeah we we have not met all of the warlords yet mm-hmm. because let's, let's see i think we're still missing two that we've not fully met i believe so but yeah based on all that considering doflamingo's partaking in human trafficking i think we can confirm that he's probably the worst Yes, he is. At, and I, I thought about that because I think he messaged me that. And I was like, you know what? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't me go. I think is like, he's got a lot going on that we'll we'll get to when we get to. But yeah, I think, how, how do I want to say this? Like, everything about the scene makes sense. Every Everything about, oh, he's a, he's a slave trader, that the shop has some kind of like, relationship with those celestial dragons and all of that uh I, all of that makes sense and and the fact that he's just like oh i'm bored of slave trade uh, i'm i'm rocking in smiles now whatever in god's name that means <laughs> <laughs> like they are they are setting him up to be a big deal yeah uh whatever he's a big deal uh but but even more importantly you know doflamingo is just like he's like don't bother me with all of this because like we got su- we got summoned by the navy, uh, and so and and then you find out, you know, he's like it's the white beard pirates versus the seven warlords of the sea. So <laughs> it's just like they're basically like, oh, you good guy, come in and come in and protect us because white beard is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like the most epic thing ever. Just imagine that the world preparing for war as Luffy is just causing. In the grand scheme of things, low level trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just like there, there's way more. There's way bigger. Uh, I don't want to. I was gonna say fish to fry. That that's kind of inappropriate given the circumstances. But you know what I mean. Like <laughs> yeah. the, the the navy's got their hands tied with other things. <laughs> For sure. But we uh, return to the auction house, and uh, the navies are all s- set up, and they're like, "All right, we got the mortar uh, mortars here. We're preparing them now. Kizaru will be here soon, so uh, let's let's do this." And uh, are the initial raiders going to come here? And he's like, yeah, "That's what I've heard." So, okay, what's going on with that? Oh mm-hmm. wait, oh I know what that's setting up now. What oh, the, what the it took me a second. Okay, what yes, the reference? Okay, because I, I, I remember something about this. That's not in these chapters. I'm not going to say it, but it's like, okay. Yeah. I just dawned him. He's like, Oh my God, I know what that's referencing. I missed that. But now that you pointed it out. Yep. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. Yep. That's, that's <laughs> a, that's a big line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the while, uh, Rayleigh is just, you know, like working, like looking at Cammy's uh, slave collar. And it's like, probably like, no, don't, don't do anything with it. It'll blow up. It's like, you know, it won't come off unless you have a key. It's like, and then you just, you just hear it like beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it just explodes in the distance where he got it off completely fine. And it's like, Frankie comes in, it's like, hey, I found the keys. It's like, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's it's like, like, oh, uh, we don't need, we don't need those. Any. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can carry the girl. It's like, how fast is Rayleigh? How, what did he also, uh, this will come up later. Just, just the, the, the slave collar thing, how, how he did that, that'll, that'll come up again. <laughs> oh, really? I, I, yeah, yeah. No idea. But, yeah, the the house and wise I think will come sooner, but but that specifically will will come up way later. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we have a great moment where Frankie's just like, uh, "Hey, all your buyers uh, ran away, so you should run while you have the chance and just toss them all the keys." And they're just so grateful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so, well, there we go. Yeah, we just freed a bunch of slaves. So you know this. That's a that's a hell yeah moment. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm trying to see. I can't. Actually, you know what? The guy that bit his tongue did not mm-hmm. die. Oh! If you look in the background there, he's the one with the oh, beard. Oh, I see it. And if you yeah, look, you can see his the... tongue has the tip off. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's Okay, so he's still there, but that's still really dark that he tried to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, they somehow saved his life, so that's, that's impressive. Wow. Still no present-day deaths since Buggy blew up his own crewmate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're like, so Luffy, do you actually know this guy? Do you know him? It's like, nope. <laughs> he doesn't. He knows you, but I don't know him really. And Hachi's like, oh yeah, that thing he uses is called hockey, I think, but I don't understand it. 
Yeah. Okay. So th- there's a confirmation. It, it's the same thing that Shanks did. Rayleigh just looks at the uh, other two crews is like, sorry about this. You're kind of just here for the sh- you're here for the show, but uh, seeing how, how you withstood that, you're all pretty strong. And yeah, one of the, so. <laughs> yeah, one of uh, Law's crew is just like, geez, I almost passed out from that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> it does it does make me wonder how much of it Rayleigh did actually control, or if he you know it intended to just like, oh, you know, let's see if he's still standing after this. So the the fact that the Straw Hats were still conscious, I think, is. Pretty impressive, even even if there was some level of targeting involved. <laughs> and uh, they, they, of course, recognize him as like, oh, I'm just an ordinary, I'm just an ordinary coding craftsman on this island. People call me Ray, but uh, don't call me by the other name. I'm just an old soldier. I just want to live in peace. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You by got, selling again. myself into slavery and then escaping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's a lot of indication about how Rayleigh lives his daily life <laughs> from what we've seen here. Luffy's like, so what do you want to say to me? Well, let's get out of here first because we're kind of completely surrounded. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They're all calling for the release, and uh, that's when Law and Kid realize, like, oh, we're not seen as victims; we're we're just accomplices. So, uh, and, Law, and the Kid's just like, well, I got to see how crazy this straw hat is, so I got no complaints. But I don't want to deal with an admiral. So, and really, it's just like, hey, I'm not using the power again, so you're on your own. If the Navy finds yeah. out who I am, I won't be able to stay here. Yeah, and I love that that kid's like, I'll clean up this mess so you don't have to worry. And then that just pisses off both Law and Luffy. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And the three of them step out outside and like, oh, crap, all three of them are captains. And yeah. th- we get this wonderful rival moment. It's like, you stay back. No, you st- stay back. It's like, yeah. tell me what to do again. I'm going to obliterate you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't realize that that's a running gag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is This is the start of a running gag. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love that even Nami's like, they're so childish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, and Zora's is all, like all four. It's like, oh, let's follow them. We'll just bust right through their lines. And the rest of them are like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I love this gag where Rayleigh's like, if we get separated, let's meet at Grove 13. Zoro says, sure. And Usopp's like, you definitely don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And then uh, Rayleigh asks what the giant's going to do. He's like, I almost became slaves, slaves at the same time. So I'm going to help these guys escape. Just stay inconspicuous. I'm like, not sure a giant's going to do that, but uh, yeah. Uh, and he just says, hey, if, if we, have, uh, old man, straw hats, if we ever meet again, I'll definitely repay this debt to you. So that's like, that's like five giants they have in their debts now. <laughs> yeah, they've saved a lot of giants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Usopp is like, they're all thinking, it was like, Usopp's like, hey, don't mention it. It's like, what are you, why are you saying that? <laughs> Hey, he he landed on the the dad, the celestial dragon dad. He helped. <laughs> oh, totally. But uh, we started seeing some powers uh, yeah. thanks to the mortars. So we got gum gum balloon from Luffy, repel from Kid, who just sends a cannonball flying right back, and then a interesting thing, a uh, space that's called Room from Law. Where they're like, what is this circle? And all of a sudden he just cuts with his sword and all of a sudden the guy's head pops off and just says shambles and replaces yep. like has his head as he's like still alive as he's headless and this cannonball fires back. It's like, what yeah, is going it's like on? Yeah, like he swapped positions basically. It's like, yeah, all three of them have devil fruit. Yeah, you yeah. think? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. There is an SBS, won't f- focus too much on it, but uh, there is a fun bit here where uh, somebody spotted that Nami got mad at uh, Brooke again in the, back- in the background of one of the pages. And uh, <laughs> the conversation was, they were asking, like, what, why'd she hit him? The conversation was, excuse me, Nami, for dessert, may I see your underwear? It's like, no. Same as always. always. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what you'd think it would be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's more pointing out just the eagle-eyed observation skills of, of the yes. people, the fans. <laughs> ah, but time for chapter 505, Kuma. What? And, yeah. <laughs> oh, Excuse no. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, huh? that ain't good. <laughs> and hey, Rob Lucci's waking up, he's bandaged, and even his bird's here. So things are yeah. maybe on the up, up and up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we begin the chapter itself was like, huh, it was more than we thought. The guy that had his head taken off is just like, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I love Luffy's like, you guys have some strange powers. <laughs> I, I, I take offense at kids saying yours is the strangest when we have Law here just juggling a guy's head. 
Yeah, I was just like, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> and the Navy men are just like, we have to hold him back until Kizaru, Kizaru arrives. And it's like, yeah, we're not waiting that long. And they just yeah. toss the head at the rest of them. And it's just like, how are you talking? I don't know, but my body feels hot. So like, you don't have a body. But hey, your body back there is on fire. Well, put it yeah. out. <laughs> he's like, what in God's name is happening? And he's just like, no matter what, just don't go inside the circle that he makes. And he's just like, room. It's like, do you mean that circle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're just all, all of a sudden it's like, oh, they all got the the ability of buggy. Not by yeah. choice. <laughs> yeah. lol has got the, he's got the Mr. Potato Head fruit. I guess so. I don't, I have <laughs> no idea what his devil fruit power it could be. But uh, Luffy decides to just break out gear three with a giant yeah. punch. And I have a pretty firm idea on what uh, Law's power is. He seems to be, well, he's Magneto. Oh, yeah, yeah you mean Kid. Oh, yeah, not, not Law. Yeah, Kid. Sorry. I, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think Kid is pretty much Magneto because he the, did his a is repel. The most yeah. And just creates a giant metal fist. <laughs> Which the art on that is incredible, by the way. And, and yeah. every time I see Kid's power, just like, just like the raw illustrative detail that like Oda goes so hard on just all of like the metal that that kid collects. It's not just um amorphous blob. It's like there's genuine detail in all of that. It's yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> I love the chaos that the law is. is oh, that's ironic. I just thought of it. The law is causing chaos, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's just all these guys running around. It's like you've got too many torsos, you've got too many arms. It's like what is it's happening? Like one guy's heads in a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and Zoro gets out. I was like, wow, they caused this much damage already. It's like okay. Machine Killer is just like wow. They got, they like to get ahead of themselves. And Rayleigh's just laughing at it all. And it's just yeah. everybody's laid that. out. L- Nothing's left. <laughs> yeah, l- of course. Luffy suffers the the side effects of Gear Three, and I love the <laughs> law kind of teases about. It. It's like you didn't really end on a high note for you. <laughs> just <with> a little <laughs> cheesy Luffy. Yeah, think. <laughs> oh, it's it's already really fun chemistry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's definitely the most immediately noticeable thing. Like as far as like the three biggest captains of of the supernovas like seeing seeing them all interact is really fun mm-hmm. yeah it, it's made very clear that odor's like we introduced nine new characters but it's these two that you only really have to pay attention to for now yeah yeah for for the most part yeah like we'll still show the other ones and what they're up to but these are the two they actually interact with luffy so they have a bit more of a thing to them yeah the, the navy's just like oh they've all come out so uh you know don't don't let them get the, be- uh, the the better of you. And they're like, hey, we got the uh, hostages through the back entrance, so take them out. Let's do this. And uh, it's like, well, let's get going. <laughs> and uh, of course, kid just says, hey, next time we meet, we'll be enemies. It's like, oh, well, I'm ne- I'm gonna be the one who finds the One Piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that just sort of catches their attention. Yeah. So much like, so oh, that mm-hmm. he gets distracted and almost takes an axe to the face until uh, Machine Killer shows up. Yeah. Yeah, and I love we're actually getting to see Killer fight. Um, but he he's got like like scythes, and he's just doing like backflips and stuff. He's all, like a Killer is awesome. He's a little underrated in my opinion. Yeah, I, I best I get get from him is he's kind of like a Swiss Army knife on his both hands, both of his. Hands. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that that seems to be my interpretation of that. It's it's pretty wild, and yeah. uh, it, it's interesting how that line took laws took kids' attention. Excuse me. It's like, man, mm. on our way here, when we said that, it always made people laugh at us. But each, but each and every time, I killed all those who laughed. Which I think that explains that that bit from earlier, where they're you know like kids get the highest bounty because he kills innocent people. So yeah, uh, mm. I guess they shouldn't have laughed at him. But uh, yep. hey, still in the oceans ahead, those who don't have the guts to say it will die first. So let's meet again in the new world. And they just man, like, this rivalry. That it's. We were talking before how Luffy doesn't really have a rival in the traditional sense. And it's like, oh, he's got him and he got some good ones. Like, yeah, not no, like I, that, like Bond rival that you really see with a lot of other shonen uh, mm-hmm. anime, but it's its own unique One Piece flavor. Right. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it definitely like Oda is really tapping into that kind of like kind of school like play ga- playground rivalry or it's just like you know it, it, it's just it's like a lo- bunch of little boys arguing about who's the best <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the vibe i get from these two but they're also i i, I love law i love killer or, i love killer but i, I love kid they're all <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, I, I love their dynamic. And so seeing them un- all interact is just great. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, well, let's go. And I, I underrated, I don't know the guy's name, but he has a like guy with like a sort of skull tat, like a skeletal cat tattoo on his face, breathing fire. It's like, oh, oh I just, I did, I did not notice that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I forgot geez, about that guy. They are being relentless to these, these maybe men and, yeah. Guy directly tries to get laws and uh, tries to get law and he just walks away and just Beppo. <laughs> and then the bear yeah. guy just kicks him in the face. It's like, yeah, I feel like we didn't acknowledge that because Luffy pointed out, I was like, why do you have a bear on your crew? <laughs> <laughs> but apparently the bear knows Kung Fu. <laughs> but I like the opportunity for all the, uh, the rest of the crew to come in. Sanji steps in to help with Luffy, help Luffy and, <laughs> and it's like, Hey, there's our exit. There's the flying fish man. There's Duval ready to help him out. <laughs> yeah. And I love uh, Duval, poor Duval, like the, the Marines uh, point their guns at him. He's like, I ain't a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> he immediately <laughs> regresses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, Robin saves him. And he's like, I was so scared. <laughs> You're still traumatized from the, the Navy headquarters trying to kill you. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, we still need to help him. So let's go. And old man, Frankie, you go first. And I, I love that Usopp's in there taking out, like, Got has the Kabuto. Yeah, everybody's job. getting everybody's getting in on the action. It really has just this whole situation just turned into pure chaos, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> Frankie even notes is like you seem to be in high spirits, old man. He's like, I'm getting excited. <laughs> yeah, it probably reminds him of the old days. <laughs> yeah, probably. Nami electrifies a bunch of people, and uh, that's when we find out that Law was able to free the slave that uh, the elder Roswald was riding around on. Captain John Bart. Yeah, it turns out he's actually a former pirate. It's like, hey, I will gladly work under you in gratitude for freeing me from the Celestial Dragon. So he just got a new crewmate. Yeah, I actually completely forgot that that happened here. <laughs> yeah freedom just this 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 random guy that's just riding around with the distinctive design yeah turns out that's for a reason <laughs> all right there you go yeah but I, I like that law still gives a little bit of credit to luffy kid successfully made it you know they destroyed the bridge away so there's like all right should be uh we should get out of town quick let's get going and all of a sudden some sort of bla- blast uh nearly hits kid and they I look think it, up it grazes him because he's he's got blood coming out oh yeah you're right and they look up, and he's just like, why is there a warlord of the, the sea on this island? And there's <laughs> well, Kuma. There, that's why this chapter's called Kuma. <laughs> yeah, just because I of that feel, last panel. Yeah. And it also makes you wonder, it's like, shouldn't he be with the rest of the warlords preparing for war against yeah. Whitebeard? Yeah, that's the thing, too. Oh, man. This whole situation has just gone from bad to worse. And we've, I think, I think what's so good about this is that we've already seen what happened last time Kuma showed up. <laughs> yeah, and to see him here now, yeah. it's like, oh, how's Kid gonna handle this? But then it also makes me realize, like, well, it turned out Kuma was a part machine, so that actually might help Kid. Right, if he's magnetic. <laughs> yeah. So, hmm, that'd be an interesting matchup. Indeed. That, that's about it. I was looking and see if there's anything about uh, the with the SBS is like, no, nah, it's just a joke one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's that's pretty much it. So I, uh, incredible, Inc- amazing, incredible, <laughs> incredible set of chapters. We didn't go as long as last week. <laughs> this one was still pretty chunky. I mean, there's, there's just a lot, a lot of, of ground to cover. Yeah, there's so much happening, so much lore, oh, and that's the incredible piece. Like. Oda's juggling so much between all the, uh, the, the, the the new characters, Luffy's, you know, still being front and center, Rayleigh being introduced, the fact that Ace is going to be executed, a war yeah. is likely to break out between... Yeah, we got this whole subplot with Whitebeard. It's like, good God. Mm. And that freaking Doflamingo was kind of behind it all. <laughs> yeah, behind the whole, at least this part of the slave trade, it's like... Yeah. No. Okay. Oh <laughs> it's it's so good. <laughs> I mean, and I, it's it's why you kind of have to feel like you need Thriller Bark there to go from to from Enos Lobby to this would just be overload. It <laughs> no really time to breathe. And, and I think it really it helps the um, the Ace subplot kind of like have a little bit of breathing room because mm-hmm. it it would be weird if we had gone like. 
post India's lobby, and then, you know, Ace and uh, Blackbeard kind of have their showdown. But, like, and, and then to jump straight into Sabo Odi. But now we kind of get to let that breathe a little bit by, like, hey, here's this thing that happened off screen. We're going to have a whole arc take place, and we're kind of kind of slowly build up to the consequences of that and, and see it bit by bit. And it makes sense to introduce another warlord because they're going to have them fighting in that big war. So introduce yeah. another one. And while also very much setting up that, yeah, Luffy beat Moria, but there's a reason they're not getting rid of him as a, a warlord this time. Yeah. It, unlike it's our, definitely, uh, we've seen kind of like the, the, um, the warlords, the fact that they're hired by the government and they're kind of like, they're, they act as deterrents basically. And they kind of get to, uh, you know, they kind of get to do their own thing. But now we're seeing like, wait, no, y- yeah, you guys are hired by the government. Like do your job, come protect us. Cause Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> we need all hands on deck. Yeah, That's how yeah, big basically. of a threat Whitebeard is. Yeah, I, I, I love the. We're, we're, you're seeing it with like through Garp's perspe- perspective. He's you know he's being really cool about it. Or just like you know we do you really want, you think we could take on two legends at the same time? But like there's definitely the sense of like panic of like there obviously the, the the decision to execute Ace. There's there's a whole lot with that too, and and it's sort of like. They must know the consequences, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're doing this for a reason and they are willing to accept, like, yeah, Whitebeard's not gonna, he's gonna be pissed. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna have to, like, come get our hired guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I can't wait. I can't wait for more. Yeah. Cause. Yeah. We've, we've had, like, two episodes of Saba Odi proper. <laughs> it's already <laughs> just bonkers. I, I mean, the thing, I, I know Saba Odi is not a very long arc. I can't remember how much is left, but it, it just gets wild. It just gets crazier. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, 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 I, I can't even explain how yet. If you read yeah, it already, you know how, but if yeah, you yeah. <laughs> oh, bear with us. <laughs> yeah, we are just getting started, my friends. Believe me. Mm-hmm. But with that, I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 501 to 505 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening, and you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube, or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brandon Bovia on Twitter, talking about anime, manga, games, and my job, and uh, yeah, nothing to really uh, promote at the moment, but no, God, man, I'm just... We're we're in the thick of it. This is this is going to be some of the best episodes of this podcast, pretty much ever. <laughs> I, I, just, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Y'all y'all are listening at a good time. It, it really is just like uh, I love doing this every week. <laughs> yeah, it's such a highlight. So yeah, yeah. If, if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreoncom slash Bittner. That's D E R R I C K B I T N E R to listen to the next episode ad free three days early. And make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 506 to 510 of One Piece. So until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. what to do why don't you settle down why don't you get out of my face somebody should muzzle both of you settle all right go back inside guys weren't you listening i told you two to go back inside first i got this try to boss me around like that again and you'll be the first one i cut down eustace